Yo, what's going on with you guys? So today I'm gonna to be checking out this video titled Every Time Jolene Acted Like Jotaro. So from this title alone, I'm guessing in the Jojo Bizarre Adventure Stone Ocean anime, Jolene has like different moments and like mannerisms that's like similar to her father. That's actually low-key pretty cool that in this anime, they incorporate Jolene like, you know, having some similar mannerisms and like showing like sudden similar behavior to her father. So I wanna check out this video and see all the sudden moments where Jolene acts like her father. Anyway, before we get into this video, man, please make sure you guys like this video. Comment below your favorite Jojo Bizarre Adventure moment. And last but certainly not least, do not forget to subscribe to the channel. The time of recording this video, the Stone Ocean anime is right around the corner, only eight okay. weeks away. Actually. So this was before the anime Anyways, came out. Okay. Later this year, a lot of people are about to be introduced to a brand new JoJo, Jolene Cujo. And for us old fans, we'll the be revisiting one. Jolene's character and her story arc in a whole new experience and medium. So in celebration of Jolene's breakthrough into the anime, I wanted to do a video dedicated to her character, but in a way that brings from she has a really cool stand. Like I said, I think if she was to fight Do Flamingo. She would take the dub. spirit she carries and what it is exactly that connects her to Damn. all the Joe stars that came before. It I know that was not just me who saw that arch. It's most common. In I won't go back because I'm not too horny, but you know what I mean. Series for JoJo's to carry the most direct similarities to their parents, like for example, Josuke and Joseph and Jorno and Dio. And Jolene is no exception, being the daughter of How Jojo, tall is she? Joseph and Jorno and Dio. And Jolene, was that her accurate height? She's like four foot. No, it says like five four. It's okay, no five six. Okay. Exception being the daughter Average of Jotaro Kujo, which makes her a very exciting character to be around, especially after you get to know her a little bit and see just how much of Jotaro's influence she carries. But certainly in a unique manner that defines Jolene's character as her own, while still connecting that bridge to her father, which embellishes Jolene with a certain nostalgia and callback. -like she has she, she has a cool ass father. I'm not gonna lie. Being a fresh take on what a JoJo can or should be, as in the early 2000s when Stone Ocean first came out jolene was certainly the most stone ocean came out in early 2000s wow okay jojo we had ever had before being the first girl who looked and acted a lot different from all of the previous big muscular men that have come before her but that's it was something new yeah see how rocky had connected this person that looked so different that's, not, that's actually make... really interesting all the previous jojos are like you know muscular big you know super chads low-key um, i'm not fully caught up to the anime but from, from what i've seen and from where i'm at right now the second iteration of Jojo, yeah, he's they're all pretty like all oh, built pause, but he does recognize and they just switched it up towards the end to a female, which is obviously fire because it's you know Jotaro's daughter as a and all, Joestar, but... just as much as we would Jonathan or Jotaro. So in the same vein as my every time Jorno acted like Dio video, today we will be focusing on Jolene, of course, and looking at her character throughout yeah. Stone Ocean and seeing how specifically even in like pictures she got some big ass actions tits. are expressed through his daughter, as well as the moments where you can truly see Jotaro's spirit in Jolene's eyes. But okay. first, I would like to take a moment to thank today's video sponsor. Uh oh, you gotta skip that. Ground used and be five the context with the watch again, w though to Netflix US on to w sponsor. 1st, just in time for part six and that's just all of jojo right there on netflix pretty much in the oh. when you start the immediate similarity that they're both introduced yeah. to the audience from inside a jail cell which is the first of many callbacks jolene has to jotaro but this communicates their shared rebellious natures being associated with the delinquent or japanese yankee character trope and although it's yankee. clear to see they project a similar edgy demeanor it's important to distinguish the differences between them them, showcasing how Jolene is not just a clone of Jotaro with a new look, but entirely her own character. For example, why are they in prison? In Jotaro's case, he got into a street fight. I think I remember new... why she got in prison. She was like framed for something. We heard I didn't that. fully watch Stone Ocean. I watched like the first three to four episodes of Stone Ocean. I'm not sure if they covered it then, but I'm pretty sure that's how she got locked Some up. Some thugs, as Star Platinum was only trying Ooh, to protect thugs. him. This led Jotaro to believing he was possessed by an evil spirit and willingly locked himself in a jail cell to protect others, which immediately changes our perspective of the character, showing Jotaro is actually extremely caring to those around him. And even for consideration of the thugs beating him up, Jotaro says it took all of thugs, his will so to funny. stop his evil spirit. Meanwhile, in Stone Ocean, Jotaro's daughter, around the same age as him when he was first arrested, is in 18. prison for I think. manslaughter and although she was yes. actually framed to be driving the car along with the dui charge she had still committed a crime of attempting to cover up a murder when assisting her boyfriend romeo in hiding a body oh, which is pretty I serious about that. and also we learned that jolene had a previous criminal record of two thefts and at the age of 14 was a member of the hell rider gang which just can't be good so unlike jotaro who was she was a much real gangster I didn't know that. Your model student up until high school. Oh, Jolene wow, that changes things. Delinquent Not for me, though. questionable past, which may have been a result of her father abandoning her from a young age. But during her trial, oh, it was okay. clear to see... Oh, okay. So she went through this phase because her father neglected her, so she decided to turn to the streets. Typical, you know, 
I have no sympathy. That Jolene was attempting to get her life under control. She said she was returning to school and didn't associate with the Hellrider gang at all anymore, but unfortunately just got caught up in the fate of a Joe star. And although she did hide the body with Romeo, she was initially she was being a W boyfriend, W girlfriend. Police, I mean, was almost manipulated and coerced in by she's Romeo. A writer, she's still she's actually a ride or die for that. I wouldn't need to go like this. Not really a good excuse. So not, to say, not to say that I'd ever kill somebody, you know. I would never. Let's keep going. He's not exactly a terrible person, just straying down the wrong path in life, which is much different from Jotro, as Jolene is actually way more reckless and criminal than her father. Which really highlights just how unique Jolene okay, is. Okay, so that's similarity. The they swap, both like troubles. But with they both like to get in trouble. The idea of what a Jojo can or should be, because we're always going to associate Jojo as the protagonist or quote unquote good guy, and they are because they're Joe stars and they all carry Jonathan's sense of justice. But it seems as the series continues, Araki would try to push the envelope on just how terrible of a person he can make the hero without losing the reader's empathy, which was definitely risky, but also resulted in some of the best JoJo's, introducing real moral questioning for the characters and the reader. So ba basically, Araki's trying to be like, you know, the creator of Death Note, where like, you know, at the beginning, you were rooting for light, then towards like the middle, especially not, especially early on, no, not even towards the middle, then early on, within like episode three or four of Death Note, Light had like this sudden change of heart where he wanted to become a god and like you know, for me at least I still fuck with Light like overall as a character he was still a good character um he carried the show obviously, but I know a lot of people liked L more than Light um for me I obviously I per I personally liked Light more than L just overall how he was like his demeanor and shit I didn't like overall like how he was just killing random people and all that but uh yeah I don't want to make this a whole Death Note tangent but I think that's the kind of I think vibe Rocky was going towards where like you were gonna. Like an anti-hero, basically. Like Jolene and eventually Johnny Joestar, as when you're reading their stories, sometimes you just have to stop and ask yourself, well, what would I do in this situation? And the answer will vary from reader to reader because there's That's a good-ass question, though. If if my girl was, ride, was, like, driving and then killed somebody, um, for me, it literally will just depend on, like, how long we know each other for me to help her. Um, I wouldn't snitch or anything, but I would just, like, you know, go my separate ways. Loki, I would help her. But then, yeah, I would just probably cut ties completely. I'm trying to think if I, like, if I was really in a situation, what would you guys do? I don't know. Always For me, right I'll, I'm, I'm, being, I'm being honest. Like, I'm just going to be honest. Jail cell introductions. It's a cool reference to Jotaro and works well at defining these characters. But I wouldn't snitch, though. I wouldn't, like, tell her anything. their personalities through the context of the story without really any exposition needed. And speaking of the story, Whoa, the actual what was that? Of Stone Ocean in Jolene's journey okay, Jolene. seems to mirror the role of Jotaro in Stardust Crusaders. Jotaro being cursed by his blood and carrying the burden of needing to fight a battle he didn't start. As upon Dio's awakening, oh, okay. Jotaro's ordinary life is thrown into turmoil with evil spirits I'm not even this far in the anime mother, yet but okay his hand to set out on a journey to break the curse and defeat Dio meanwhile in Stone Ocean Jolene that's crazy so he's fighting somebody who hasn't really done anything to him personally I think same burden of fate and whose life is thrown into even deeper turmoil by a man carrying out Dio's will his successor cursed by blood once again Uchi? Jolene is framed for murder and given a 15 year sentence simply just to That's be used tough. as a pawn in Father Pucci's greater goal of achieving heaven and again okay they showed us the first time I wanted to skip it but I can't skip it now used as a pawn let's go to in it Father Pucci's greater goal of that's a crazy achieving heaven and yeah. the overly complicated they know what they're doing successful with that. plan in the beginning of stone ocean by enrico pucci of Lauren Jotaro to green dolphin results in him falling ill after being stripped of his stand in memory discs by white snake which leaves Jotaro in a comatose state for a majority of the part and it's up to jolene to defeat pucci in order to save her father which is extremely right. similar to Jotaro's role in part three of needing to save his ill mother by defeating dio further connecting the strands of fate between father and daughter it can almost be said that stone oh. ocean is a okay. retelling of Stardust Crusaders or a repeating of the cycle, which is an important theme to consider by the end of the part. As if the Joestar bloodline had continued, yeah, I haven't so seen a single curse, episode of Stardust Crusaders, so I wouldn't know. Being born into fights of their ancestors, and this theme of the Joestar curse is most predominant in the stories of Jotaro and Jolene, inheriting the fate to walk? fight Dio, something neither of them asked for or deserved, which stripped them of their youth. The villain of Stone Ocean, Enrico Pucci, also plays an interesting role in this theme, being the successor. Okay. 
father of Dio, he can also be seen as a descendant of sorts. A descendant burdened to live yeah. and fight for their ancestor. Who's Although, that in the back, though? Pucci's oh, that's Julian, okay. Willingly. There's an arc near in the middle of Stone Ocean where Jolene and Pucci fight in the tall grass outside the prison, and Jolene handcuffs herself to Pucci to keep him in range of her stone free. Mm, she knows what she's doing with that handcuffs. And on Jolene's part, definitely a Jotaro-esque move. She's but into secondly, some kinky has a certain shit. symbolic quality I find quite profound. The idea what is this on her legs? You should just stamp her legs or something? If these two characters are not fighting for their own ideas or reasons, Damn, she's bleeding but for too. that of their inherited fates. Pucci fighting for Dio, and Jolene forced to fight the will of Dio. And it's that commonality or curse okay. they inherited that connects them, creating a dichotomy between the two characters. Dichotomy. I've heard that word used so many times. Um, I don't know the exact definition, but I know what kind of means like the difference. It's like how people use the word. See, that's how I know how to like pick up fancy words just like just gotta use common sense literally chained together connected by fate just some really badass symbolism of Araki in that fight but beyond the overarching role and plot similarities Jolene and Jotaro share there are a ton of more specific callback like similarities throughout the part circling okay. back to the beginning of Stone Ocean in the fight against John she got Sniped right in the chest. Galier, Jolene uses Stone Free to catch a bullet, referencing Star Platinum's first appearance, catching the bullet Jotaro fires at himself in the jail cell to show his evil spirit. And on the okay. topic of stands, their stands are not really similar at all, actually. Yes, they both punch stuff, but who doesn't? While Star Platinum That's is all about fact. power and speed, Stone Free is more resourceful and versatile, making up for it. If you can't repetitively speed. punch somebody in Jojo Bizarre Adventure, I feel like you're you're done for. Power. There's even a scene where Jolene attempts to use Star Platinum through the stand in but it's quickly ejected as it's just too powerful to possess. Truly a testament oh, to shit. Star Platinum's ability. And this difference in stand power is definitely attributed to She just deadass try to take her father's stand and use it for herself. Cloth, okay. They have their own unique shades. I mean, it should. For example, I would have, if I was her, I would be like, okay, if I'm your daughter, it should work, but I guess not. stoic. He will remain quiet and perceptive. But and I, know, I know for a fact it would definitely work if Jojo, if Jotaro would had a son, you know, searching just, for just any saying, possible just solution while keeping his cool, even if he's in pain, never wanting to show his enemy how he truly feels. Well, Jolene mm, is okay. a lot more Masculine. expressive and very open about her keeping your emotions she will in speak touch. her mind to anyone and everyone, even if it gets her in trouble. She's also very confrontational and won't play along with any facades. If she sees you doing some bullshit, she's going to call, call you out. out. And yep. out of all okay. of the Jojos, I would definitely consider Jolene the most hot headed, violent and outspoken of the family. And she, just plain hot. I would say. A certified girl boss, blending a bit of Joseph with Jotaro, and it's also girl worth boss, mentioning okay, I that guess. Joseph is quite comparable to Jolene, and their similar personalities were paid homage in some Battle Tendency key artwork, where Joseph is drawn with multiple Jolene references, which makes sense because they are very similar. But when it comes time okay. to lay down the law, the final beating is when we can truly see the most Jotaro within Jolene, inheriting the aura or a stand mm. of course. That was cool, I'm not gonna lie to you. The person at the other end of that punch was gonna feel every inch of that knuckle. Longer stand barrages more often. Nothing quite comparable to the seven page Muda, but consistent heavy finishers nearly every fight. And speaking of finishers, Jolene and Jotaro both have beaten enemies using a baseball. Jotaro technically oh, in a really? video okay. game and Jolene with the iconic 1,000 throw okay. aura aura. And in addition to the Oda Oda barrage, 1, another mannerism Jolene inherited was Jotaro's catchphrase. I, I guess you could call it kind of a catchphrase. Oh, in the game? Yada yada de ze, but with the feminine stuff, yada that. yada de wa, which is honestly just de more wa. fun to say. The wa, the wa, the wa. Both having the same meaning of good grief or like give me a break, just a phrase used to express their indifference to most enemies or surprises, okay. giving both of the characters that sort of too cool to care attitude. And more on their fighting styles, these two seem to enjoy causing physical pain more so than any other Joe star, finding satisfaction. Oh, they like that. And they will also hurt themselves they like giving in order pain. to win, having the highest pain tolerance among the JoJo's. For example, Jolene setting herself on fire for like half a chapter in order to defeat Rakil, and Jotaro allowing what? Anubis to stab him directly in the gut in order to jam the blade in him. And it's specifically this similarity that makes That's Jolene crazy. such an exciting character to see fight and where we see the most similarities to Jotaro, just in that raw fighting spirit. So although Jolene though. does act like Jotaro, they probably have just as many, if not more differences between their personalities, values, relationships, yeah. social presence, Interesting. and more. Okay. That is a good thing to distinguish the two characters while still drawing connections between them. And that is every time Jolene acted like Jotaro. Okay, w. not literally every time because there 
there was just a little bit yeah. of Jotaro's essence and every Jolene moment essentially. Oh, right, yeah, okay. Were just Makes the sense. Main connections I like that. Okay, this is good video. The father and daughter that let us recognize Jotaro Ooh. when we look at Jolene. All right, everyone, I hope you were all absolutely psyched for Fire this Stone Ocean anime. Okay, so yeah, this is a really good video, man. I low-key thought it was just going to be a compilation of the actual anime showing, showing like different scenes of Jolene acting like her father. But um, I like the way he broke it down and just like, you know, gave us an overall glimpse and like overall outlook on like how Jolene, you know, has some certain mannerisms and like certain behaviors of Jotaro, her father. But yeah, man, this is a really good video. I personally learned a lot about Jolene from this video that I probably would never have known. But yeah, seeing how like, you know, Araki was able to like, you know, maneuver that switch from like a masculine, you know, main character Jojo to a female without even like fully watching stone ocean i think he did a pretty good job because like i know a lot of people really like stone ocean i know that whatever rocky did in the manga to transition to jolene really like you know stood up to the hype but yeah man that's all i got for this video reaction man if you guys are new here make sure you guys like comment and subscribe and we out